Uh, many thanks to Rohan and Amok uh, for your excellent uh, presentation. And now uh, let's welcome uh, Wei Ling uh, from uh, Baidu X Lab. Yeah, uh, he uh, will uh, give us the. Uh, sorry, what was it? <laughs> Magic tricks for self-driving cars. Yeah, let's welcome. Thanks for the introduction. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending our talk. So my name is Wei Lin Xu. I'm a PhD student in computer science at the University of Virginia. And I'm currently an intern researcher at Baidu S Lab. So uh, today I'm not going here to, uh, to defend that Baidu's deep speech against Berkeley attack. <laughs> I'm going to show you some <laughs> interesting magic tricks uh, for the self-driving cars. And this is a joint work uh, with my colleagues at Baidu S Lab, uh, Dr. Zheng Yuzhong and Dr. Yuan Han Jia. Right, so, so is this working? Probably I should just use keyboard. Okay, so b before my presentation, I wanted to do some, uh, do several, several clarifications. First, this is, this is just a proof of concept. Second, we are not targeting any autonomous vehicle vendors, and instead our target is the general computer vision technique that uh, could be used on many self-driving cars. So we are not go going to make any big news or cause PR, PR crisis for anybody. So, uh, and, but I believe our attack is, is very uh, practical and has some implications about self-driving cars. So uh, we ask you not to reproduce our magic tricks against your neighbor's self-driving car. And we are not responsible for, the, for any good or bad consequences. <laughs> okay, so first of all, let me briefly introduce a uh, typical autonomous vehicle framework. So uh, a self-driving car, um, does not necessarily look very different from the other cars we, we are driving every day. It may have the same cabin, the same wheels, and the same power chain. It said that it, 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 ha it has uh, astro sensors and actuators, as well as a brand, which consists of uh, three major components, the procession module, the prediction module, and the planning module. So uh, for a self-driving car to drive a uh, 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 to finish the driving task, it requires some sensors such as a radar, lidar, or camera to perceive the surroundings on the road. For example, it needs to recognize the driveway areas and it needs to recognize the other road uh, objects on the road such as the other cars or pedestrians uh, and, and something like that. And the perception module uh, recognizes those objects, uh, but it only knows the, uh, the situation at that moment. And, but, uh, that's why we need a prediction module. So using the predi mo prediction module, we can, under, uh, we can, we can uh, under, uh, predict the, the location of the, those objects uh, in, in the future se seconds so that the planning module could uh, make a plan uh, to, to drive the vehicle smoothly to avoid the obstacles and to reach the uh, destination. So uh, in this work, we focus on, focus on the camera-based perception techniques. So. Uh, it should uh, work like this. Uh, using the camera input, the object det detection uh, uh, model should be able to recognize the, uh, the size the lo and the location of those objects, such as the cars. And the objects could be very close to, to, to the camera, and it, it could be very far from the camera. So the, the object uh, detection mod model should be able to recognize all those important objects to uh, make the uh, driving uh, smooth. And here we want to show you some uh, magic. <laughs> so here we, ha we have the uh, DEFCON flag. I think everyone here recognizes this as the DEFCON flag. And so we want to put this in our thing. So here we just uh, put it uh, on, the, on the floor. And you can see that the, the target perception module just recognized the DEFCON flag as a car with very high uh, confidence. So uh, we, we can change the viewpoint of the camera and, and the prediction is still uh, uh, very confident. 
So uh, next, I, I will uh, introduce uh, how we uh, implement those attacks. And okay, so this is our target. It's, it's the YOLO V3 model, uh, which is very famous in the computer vision. And I believe some self-driving cars use the similar architectures, even though they used uh, different training sets to, to get a model uh, on, their, on their cars. And this model takes the input of uh, 416 by 416 and in three channels, RGB, RGB channels. So it's a car color image input. And the model V3 model is huge. Uh, it has 147 uh, trainable layers and 62 million uh, trainable parameters in, in total. So it's a very large and complicated model. And the, out, uh, the YOLO V3 model uh, can uh, output uh, 3,549 3, bonding boxes. Uh, uh, of course, we only show the uh, bonding boxes with a high confidence here, such as the stop sign uh, on, on, uh, on the corner. And the, the target model uh, we use here, uh, it, it was trained with the Coco data set, the MS Coco data set. So it has uh, 80 classics in total, but here we only focus on the, those important classics, such as person, car, truck, bus, bus and uh, bicycle motorcycles because those are more ready to self-driving cars. And in order to attack the YOLO V3 model, we need to understand how the model do the, uh, it, uh, does the in, uh, in inference. So for uh, an input uh, image, the YOLO model first uh, split it into, uh, uh, into several grids. So the YOLO model actually uses uh, three different grids. Uh, this, uh, this is the uh, first one, the th uh, 13 by three grid, and it, it has the, uh, the 26 by 26 and 52 by 52. Here we, we will just use this 13 by 13 as a running example because it's, it's more visible uh, on slides. So for, for any unit uh, on this grid, grid uh, the model uh, will give some prediction about the objects uh, with the center point within this uh, ye yellow, yellow unit. And uh, this prediction will not be wild. It, it should have some uh, references. So the, ten, te the technique uh, Yolo V3 uses is called an anchor box. So uh, anchor box is like a reference for a specific pred uh, predic uh, prediction of the uh, object detection. So uh, for each unit of the grid, and, and then for each uh, anchor box, we will have a uh, prediction about uh, a specific object. And it's, it, has, it is a very long vector. So I will uh, explain uh, how should we interpret those vec vectors. And the first, three, uh, the first four uh, scalars are about the bonding box about the, uh, the detected object. And first, we need to de uh, determine the center point is of this object. Uh, we, we use the, uh, the location of this yellow unit. So here, at the, uh, it's 11 and 2 uh, on this uh, grid. And we need the uh, output uh, of Tx and Ty to calculate the center point, uh, for example, uh, in this in this example, the center point is uh, at a, a green green point. And next, we we will need to use the uh, third and fourth uh, output to calculate the object size. So uh, it is calculated uh, with, with the one of the anchor boxes, the first one, the PW, uh, the width and height of the anchor box. So here we got uh, we got this uh, the, the that detected object should be in this size. And so this is uh, uh, the location and size of the bonding box. And uh, at this point, we don't know uh, which, which object uh, class uh, uh, is the prediction. So uh, we, needed, uh, we have uh, 80 uh, scalars about the uh, prediction on the class, class six. So uh, Yellow V3 uh, used 80 different sigmoid outputs to do this uh, class prediction instead of the uh, more com commonly used uh, uh, soft mass function. And here we, we can tell that the stop sign should have the highest uh, probability if the model uh, is, is a good model. And, um, but there are some, uh, some other cases that a bonding box may not, uh, con may not contain any objects. So uh, the YOLO V3 model use an output called object next. So the, uh, it is also a, a sigma output. Uh, the higher uh, object next means that uh, the, the higher confidence on it, there's an object in this uh, bonding box. So uh, we uh, uh, do this multiplication and get the final uh, confidence uh, for this uh, bond bonding boxes. So we know that stop sign has the highest uh, confidence. Uh, so we know uh, the Euro V3 model predicts there's a stop sign at, at this location. Okay, that's the Euro V3 model. 
And let me introduce our flat model. It, it could be, I, I think it's different from the many adversarial machine learning work uh, because we don't assume that the perturbation we add is uh, 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 invisible to human eyes. So actually, uh, in, in our third model, we can put any uh, image patch on, uh, on the surface of any objects in our scene. So for in, in this case, we put it on the floor because it's, it's more visible to our camera. And of course, we, we will add some perturbations and calculated by our algorithm. And then uh, it would be uh, interpreted differently uh, to human human vision. Okay, next I will introduce uh, uh, introduce videos in in this attack. And uh, first, uh, we need to implement this uh, input con construction pipeline because we we need the algorithm to cal calculate the, uh, uh, to get the uh, input that w would uh, make our objective fun function to to the uh, destination we want. And First, we need to resize the, the picture to a, to a specific size so that it could fit the location uh, we wanted to, to put on. And then we need to uh, do this uh, perspective tra transformation uh, so that we can get a credit viewpoint from the camera. And then we, we remove that uh, mask uh, air, uh, pixels of, of the same picture. And then we uh, paste the uh, image patch to, to that location. So that's how we uh, construct this input. And the whole pipeline is differentiable. So, that, so in our tag, we can directly calculate the, uh, the, the image that, uh, we, we should have for this uh, successful attack. Uh, and the second thing is about the object, objectives. So uh, for different attacks, we should uh, de define different uh, objective function. And the first example is the production attack I, I just showed you uh, as, as a demo. And there are many ways to design a, a objective function for a specific uh, uh, goal. And the f first, we can do it uh, in an easy way. We, ju we just want more certain objects on the whole image. So uh, uh, I'm not going to show you any uh, equations here. I think you have seen a lot these days. And I just show you some pseudocode. So uh, he here, uh, we, we just want the, uh, want, uh, the, the, uh, the model to predict more uh, car, car okay, 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 great more car objects uh, from, from the input. So we just get the uh, index of the car, cl uh, car class, and then uh, in this white box class pro uh, properties uh, ma uh, matrix, and we, we, we use this line of code to, to tell the algorithm that we just want to uh, uh, maximize the probability of the car class for every, uh, for every uh, grid unix. And remember that we have the object next uh, output for the Euro uh, V3 pr prediction. So we also add uh, that in our uh, loss function. And then we uh, plus, uh, we sum up the, the two, two loss. And that's our final loss. And so this is very easy to implement, but it could be uh, difficult to optimize because if you have so, so many outputs. And, and the result might not be very, very, uh, very good because it, it doesn't look, Look uh, into a different crowd. <laughs> it predicted two ca two cars if from from the perturbations, and so we we should uh, refine those objective function. So because we have uh, we have, we know how your V three model ca uh, calculate the uh, the prediction, so we can just do make a reverse uh, reverse because we know uh, the exact location we want the model to predict object, so we can just calculate use a, a calculator to, to get the, uh, pr the prediction vector for, uh, for the Euro V3 model, and then we use the mean square error to make the, uh, uh, the prediction of the input to get as close as possible to the uh, calculated results. And, it, and in this way, it, it could, it could uh, produce the results like this, which we prefer. Mm. And in, in other attacks, uh, for example, uh, object uh, vanish, we can also have, uh, ma uh, have many different ways to design an object function, uh, object function. And this, this is just a very coarse version. And so here, uh, you know, somebody uh, wouldn't like others to recognize his car, so they, uh, they might exploit exp 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 the law in California to, uh, to release the car every six months, and they don't have to put a uh, license plate on it. And if, if it, it, it want, uh, if they want to do, uh, do it more uh, aggressively, they can, they can even put, uh, they can, they can even put a, 
a spe specialized uh, license plate on it so that the, the other self-driving cars will not recognize it as a car at all. And it, uh, and the code is, is, is also very simple because this is a, a course objective uh, function, and we just get the car index, and then we we take out the minus sign from the two log, the two logs uh, variables, and then uh, that's the loss funnel. Uh, so the, the result will look like this: the model could couldn't recognize the uh, object as a car with that license plate. And the, the other interesting uh, metric trick would be the transformation. So we can make a certain object class to transform to other classes. Uh, so for example, we can make a car uh, look like a train to the YOLO V3 model. And we just uh, uh, add the uh, uh, cl different uh, class uh, probabilities to the loss function. And then we can get a result like, uh, like this. So it's a different uh, license, license plate. and. It's like uh, the transformer in, in the middle stage because the object looked like uh, a train and, and a car to the model with similar probabilities. And okay, so we have discussed uh, how we construct the input and how we design the objective function. And the next is about how to get exactly, exactly get the, those uh, inputs. So we need some optimization techniques. And we have found that uh, th these two tricks uh, are very effective in our attack. Uh, which is first uh, first uh, introduced by uh, uh, this uh, Oakland paper by uh, Nicholas Kalini. And the first trick is to uh, ch use the change of uh, variable. Uh, because in, in, our, uh, in the pixel space, we have th this interval constraint from, uh, we normalize it to zero and one. And if you your input has to be minus, then it's not going to be a effective pixel in the physical world. So you're not going to, uh, realize the attack in the physical world. So this uh, interval constraint is very important to realize this physical attack. So, uh, we, we use the change of variable uh, trick to convert the uh, input to the 10, ten edge space. So then it, has, uh, in, it would uh, encode this interval in, in our objective function. And then we can use uh, many of the shelf optimizers such as ADAM to, to do this uh, optimization. And the second trick, uh, useful trick, is to optimize the logics instead of the model output. Uh, so in, in, in Akainis paper, they found that uh, if we can skip the functions at the last layer, like sigmoid, sigmoid or softmax, we can avoid the vanishing gradients. And it helps to get the be uh, better results. OK, so far, uh, we have the, me we have the uh, methods to generate a successful digital attack. But uh, image sensing is not an identity function. So we, uh, that, uh, it doesn't mean we, we could do it in the physical world. Uh, because uh, if you, need, you need to print out uh, the image patch, and you need a camera to, uh, to take a picture of the scene, and then you, you get an input for, for the YOLO V3 model. And for printer or cameras, uh, they, they have uh, I mean, several uh, uh, witnesses, for example, they should it, uh, they have very limited resolutions. So even if you, you calculate that the specific pixel should be in a specific value, but you may not be able to do that after you print it out and use a camera to take, take the picture. And, and the printer and camera could have some dis distortions, so, uh, and they, ha they all ha both have the render noise. So we need to con consider all these uh, pos pos uh, possible uh, factors to uh, realize the physical attack. And we found that uh, the several uh, methods, uh, um, uh, techniques in firstly introduced by uh, the researchers at CMU is very useful in our attack. Uh, for example, for the limited resolution, and they, they introduced a regularization term to smooth the patch uh, with the total variation regularization. And for the distortions, they have uh, developed a manual color management and, uh, and, uh, rep and uh, designed a non printability loss uh, to in to encode this uh, uh, color man management in, in the optimization. And, and in, in the physical world, we, not, we might not be able to put the image patch to the exact location to, to match the pixels in, in the digital image. So uh, we, we use this trick as in every uh, iteration of the, this optimization, we uh, make some random transformations. So the, the, the generated patch would be uh, robust to some uh, movements uh, in, of the uh, image patch. 
Okay, so here comes the conclusion. Uh, we have shown that the magicians can fool the object de detection models, and so can attackers. So uh, we should be very cautious with the self-driving cars that rely on the computer vision. And that's it. Okay, thank you for listening to my talk. I can take any questions if you have. <laughs> Okay, so we were not allowed to <laughs> show, show the logo there. If you want, uh, like we can sell that location for you. You can put your, your name there. <laughs> I didn't quite follow how you, um, so you divided the image into little subsets, and then you analyzed each, um, each little section individually, and then somehow you got a bounding box for the entire stop sign. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I think that's the part of the Euro V3 model itself. Okay. So it's not about it, actually about the attack. <laughs> it's just a way to interpret the results of your Euro, Euro V3 model. And if we want to attack the model, we have to follow the design uh, pipeline for that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so here what, what we sh show on the screen is, I think it should be called as semi-physical attack because we, we show these pictures on, on the screen, and, but we, we use the actual camera to take the picture, and we change the viewpoint of the camera and show you the video. Uh, it, it's a screen uh, record on my iPhone. Yeah, the model is interpreting a screen. Yes. Yeah, so I, I run the Euro V3 model on my mobile phone and I use the camera on my mobile phone to take this video. So uh, uh. you use an example of like a license plate and this is a way to misidentify something as small as a sticker that somebody slaps on the back of a car and call it a community? It depends because this is the proof of concept. I think there's many other factors that could change the uh, result of this attack. Okay, so good question. I think uh, this uh, depends on the model because uh, different models have a different input size. I mean, if the input size is larger, maybe probably a smaller patch would be effective because it could cause uh, more, uh, more different uh, pixels in your in your inside uh, in your in your input. Okay, David. Uh, in the object vanish attack. Um, huh. Does it work by reducing the objectness output or by reducing all the specific class outputs? You can do both. Do, yeah. do you know which one? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a design choice. You, you can try both and just try to find uh, which, which uh, the definition is the best for your optimizer. Okay. Because uh, this, for this attack, it is a non-convex function. You don't have a a good optimizer that can always get the back solution. So again, you should just try. Uh, this is a great question. So we, we, uh, we just tried Wi-Boss attack here. Uh, but uh, we tried other mo models on my mobile phone to test it. Uh, uh, these are uh, outputs, and we found that they are still effective, probably because the model are similar enough to reproduce the attack. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 okay, so for this specific example, because we didn't add a uh, large uh, movement steps in our each, in each uh, iteration, so it, it might has very, uh, some limited uh, uh, robot snakes to the uh, uh, viewpoint change. But if you really like that feature, you can add more uh, add a la larger move, moving distance in your each iteration, and the output should be more robots to that movement. Okay, okay. that gentleman first. <laughs> Can you uh, recompute uh, at least 
Uh, here, here we use percept, uh, perspective transform. I think it's a more pow powerful method to represent this transformation. And alpha is the subset. Alpha. That's, but, uh, sorry, I guess the question is how huh? quickly can you come up with a new image? Okay, so this is the offline attack, actually. That's the answer. <laughs> okay. we, we are not, uh, w uh, what we, we are sh showing here is not an online attack. So, It is optimized to make it rec be recognized as car in our objective function, but we, we didn't really make the, uh, the amount of pixel values we can change in our attack. But for this specific example, we, ju we just run uh, 10 iterations on my um, MacBook Pro CPU. So <laughs> that's it. 10 iterations of the image or 10 iterations of the model? Uh, so we attack a, a pre trained model, and the 10 iterations here uh, means the attack iterations. So we get the gradients from the input for 10 times and update the uh, so update image, input. Update yes, image, image, yes. Yes. Okay, great question. So actually, we have we have tried to print the image patch patch out and put it on another image. So I think it, so in that way we didn't take the video uh, on the screen, and it's the actual paper we printed out, and we we still observe the similar results. It would be rec recognized as the as car sometimes, but it's the success rate is uh, is not as uh, as high as this one uh, because we we didn't. For for that one, we we didn't use use the uh, non printability uh, loss to uh, to take care of this uh, uh, printing distortions. Okay, do we have more questions? If no, uh, thanks for attending my talk. Thank you.